C Sharp 14 has been released with new features, but is it worth updating your project to .NET 10? In this video, we'll go through the new features so you can make a choice as to whether to update your ASP.NET Core project to .NET 10 at this time. We'll be looking at a number of new features, and the first new feature that we'll look at is extension members. Now, extension methods have been in C Sharp for a very long time. This is where you pass in the instance using the list keyword. You can add parameters to it and then return a value. What we're doing here is we're passing in an I enumerable source. It's going to go through and count all the objects in the I enumerable, and then it will count all the strings that start with a particular letter. We're also doing it for all the strings that end with a particular letter. So we've got this list of string here, and we're calling the methods after the instance. We're passing in the letter as part of the parameter. What do you think the results will return? So we're counting the values starting with the letter D, so that would be David and Donald, and counting the values that end with the letter P, that would be Trump. So extension methods is similar to extension methods, but it tidies it up a little bit. The way this works is that we call the extension syntax, and we pass in the instance as part of the parameter. So it's an I enumerable string, which we'll call source. And then we can copy and paste these extension methods into the extension syntax. We're going to make some changes to it. We'll remove the static keyword. We'll rename it the member. And we no longer need the instance in here. Why do you think that is? We're already including it as part of the extension syntax, so we don't need it again. So we can remove that in both of them. We're now going to call them. How do you think we can call those extension members? We're doing it in exactly the same way. So literally, we get the instance and then call it after it. So that's now run the console application. We expect the values to start with the letter D to be 2, which is David and Donald, and ending with the letter P, we expect that to be 1. And that's what's being returned. So we now know our first new feature. The next new feature we're going to have a look at is the field keyword. In this class, we've set up a private field of underscore price. This is being set in this property. And the reason why we're doing that is we're checking the value for it. So if the value is equal or bigger to 50, then we're setting it as the value. Otherwise, we're throwing an exception saying that the price must be at least 50. Now with the new field keyword, we can tidy this up a bit. So we'll copy and paste the class. We rename it to product. We'll remove the private field. And that means we no longer need that. So what do you think we're going to set the private field to? We're going to use the new field keyword like this. Now we'll test this out. So we're creating a new instance of the product. We're setting the price to 46. What do you think will happen when we run this console application? Let's find out. It throws the exception saying specified argument was out of range of valid values, parameter price must be at least 50. Let's now change the price to 52, and it's now outputting it to the console application. The field keyword is a useful new feature. Next feature we'll look at is unbound generic types and name of. Before C Sharp 14, if you were using the name of keyword and you had a type that needed a generic type, you had to specify that generic type. But in C Sharp 14, you no longer need to do that. You can remove the generic type like that, and it will still get the name of the type, which will be list. We can test this out in this console application, and that's returning the result. A small feature, but one that could come in quite handy. Before we have a look at the other features, just to let you know that Minimal APIs has some major updates in .NET 10. If you've not used Minimal APIs before, you really should, as it's likely to take over controllers in the near future. And I have a course where you can get started. You can check it out at roundthecode.com slash mim1. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. Let's get back to the new features in C Sharp 14. And the next new feature we'll look at is simple Lambda parameters with modifiers. We have this delegate called try password. It's passing in a couple of parameters of string, and then it's outputting the result based on the generic type. Now we're returning that delegate in this extension method, but we're passing in the parameters. What do you think the issue is here? We're having to specify the types again, despite the fact we know what they are from the delegate. And this is one of the improvements in C Sharp 14. 
So if we copy and paste this, we will rename the method and we can remove the types from the Lambda expression. And it knows that because in the try pass word delegate, it's got the types up here. And you'd still call it in the same way as you did before. That's an improvement for Lambda expressions. We'll now look at partial constructors and events. For this, we've added a partial class. What do you think a partial class does? It allows you to add implementation for the same class in a separate file. Now we've got declarations for the constructor, marking them as partial, and also for the event. What do you think we'll need to do in a separate file as part of the same partial class? So this is this file. It's the same class name, but in a separate file, we've added the implementation. So we've added the implementation for the constructor and also the implementation for the event. And there are new features in C Sharp 14, partial constructors and events. When you subscribe, you'll be notified for any new .NET videos that are released on this channel. Let's get back to the features in C Sharp 14. Next up, we'll look at user-defined compound assignment. For this, we've got an integer of a which equals three and then an integer of b equals two. What do you think's happening here? Well, this is effectively the same as saying b equals b plus a. So we expect the value for b to be five once this is called. With C Sharp 14, the plus equals operator can now be used as an override in a class. So we have this class, so we're specifying the price as a parameter in the constructor and setting it to the price and subtotal properties. And then we've got this plus equals operator. And what we're doing is we're adding the price that we're passing in as part of the operator to the subtotal. So we can create two new instances of it. So the A, we're passing in the price of 44. And then for B, we're passing in the price of 22. What will the subtotal be for B, do you think, when we call this operator? If it's 44 plus 22, we're adding the subtotal to it each time from the price. So it should equal 66. And that's what's being returned. The last feature we're going to look at is no conditional assignment. Before C Sharp 14, if you wanted to call a member in another bull class, you'd have to do a null check to make sure it's not null. Only then could you call the member. But with C Sharp 14, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is add the question mark operator there. And what do you think will happen if customer is null? Absolutely nothing. The compiler will just ignore it. And that's the new features covered in C Sharp 14. So there's some features in there that you like the look of, but that means you need to update your project to .NET 10, right? Wrong. You can use C Sharp 14 in projects that are earlier than .NET 10. First, you need to make sure that you've got the .NET 10 SDK installed. Then open up the csproj file in your project, and then you can set the lang version attribute. So you can set it to the language number, which is C Sharp 14. You can also set it to latest, this will be the latest version of C-sharp, including minor versions. You can also set it to latest major. This is the latest major version of C-sharp. And you can also set it to default, which is exactly the same as latest major. So is it worth using C-sharp 14 at this time? Well, if you're using the features the old way, then the answer is yes, as it's going to tidy up your code. And if you want to know more about what's new in C-sharp and .NET, then watch this video next. To download the code example for this tutorial, go to roundthecode.com slash examples. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. Leave any comments that you have about C Sharp 14 and I'll see you on the next video.